With the realm of hyperscale artificial intelligence becoming more substantial than ever, South Korean platform giant Naver has put out its very own AI model dubbed HyperClovax. What makes this homegrown model special or different from other existing models? What's behind local firms' pursuit of creating their own AI services? And will there ever be a perfect AI model? Naver has officially joined the global AI race by introducing its Hyper Clovo X. Will the newest edition be a game changer? Joining me is Matthew Wiegand, and good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. And also, Professor Lee Soo-young from KAIST. He's also the co-founder of Artificial Language. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to join. Matthew, I want to start with you. What are some of the characteristics of this newest AI model, Hyper Clovo X? Well, it's a... Uh... The, I, th I guess the biggest thing about it is that it's specifically designed to work in and work with the Korean language. Mm. So uh, as we're probably all familiar with uh, some international services like Google Translate or Papago or have historically had problems working with Korean language because the grammar and syntax is much different from uh, other languages. So this one is specifically designed to work with Korea and Korean language uh, services. Also, it's... Uh, an updated version of Hyperclova without the X that came out in 2021. And it is the, it's the hope for a new set of businesses by, by Naver. Mm -hmm. Naver is the Korea's number one search engine and it's been that way for as long as I've been in Korea, which has been a long time. So it's got upgraded search op functions and shopping functions and uh, advertising. It's got a chat bot that you can have a conversation with. You can ask questions and go back and forth. And uh, there is a, especially a new kind of search service where you can ask questions and it can connect you to many different services that Neighbor has. And you can ask it just as long as you want. You can have a really long question and it should be able to answer everything you've asked it. And also there is, a, there's, soon there will be a writing aspect where you can help it generate, it can help you generate uh, content for content creators and there's going to be some sort of uh, AI-based advertisement service mm. where you can like interact with and talk to advertisements and right. ask questions to them. Right, it's definitely Korean friendly and also more interacting that you can actually have an ongoing conversation. Yeah. Now, what has been the reaction from the users? I wanna know the most and also from the market. Well, um, everyone's been uh, pretty optimistic about it uh, on the market side, you know, this is, a uh, new blue ocean of how to of how to make money and how to better reach consumers and how to do business and all the kind of things that companies like. There's also been, a, I would have to say, there's been a kind of a mixed reaction from uh, the general public. Some people have been optimistic about it, hoping that it will be good. Some people said that they've used it already and it's been a little bit disappointing. Or And some people have said that it's they're worried that it's about half a year behind the competition, so they're not sure how it's going to turn out. So basically, positive and negative and uh, hopes and dreams are all mixed up together now, and people are not quite sure how to take it. Right, it's just been one day, so mixed yeah. reactions from users and the market at the same time. Now, Professor E, as an AI expert yourself, how advanced is Naver's Hyperclova X? Because Matthew just mentioned it's the upgrade version of the Hyperclova X, a Hyperclova without the X, right? Right. Yeah. So, as far as neighbors inform us, the Hyperclova X made several important advancements in language model. The main difference is coming from the training data, as Matthew already said. The global computers trained a lot of training data but very tiny portion of them uh, come from Korean language. However, the Hyperclova X utilizes about 6,000 times more Korean training data, so it's supposed to respond well for Korean question and answers and, and Korean intentions. Secondly, it greatly reduced to important difficulties of existing large language model, that is reducing so-called hallucination by 70, 72%, and also easy personalization with internal document with hopefully without internet connection for data security. 
the hallucination or error on answers is inevitable in gen generative models, but the same is true for true human. Human evaluate correctness of the answers by top-down attention, I think top hypoclover X do something similar. Thirdly, it also makes improvement on understanding the true user's intention and coming up with some logical plan how to get proper answers with multi-tone question and answers. Lastly, it used more number of learnable parameters, possibly about four times more than ChatGPT, but which also requires more training there and better understanding. Right. I also did give it a try, and I have to say, Clover X's first language is definitely Korean. Right. And also, Matthew, now then, how is HyperClovax trying to expand its presence in the global AI world at the moment? Well, from what I've read, uh, Neighbor has said that their goal is to focus on markets where um, large uh, US-based or Chinese-based tech companies have not gone. Mm. So they want to uh, focus on uh, languages that don't have so much of a focus already like uh, places in uh, Southeast Asia or countries in the Middle East. And they want to uh, expand their capability of being able to uh, train data on uh, other languages like that, like they've had experience with training in Korean already. Mm. And they want to expand the capabilities of and the usefulness of search in those niche markets. Because, you know, Neighbor's core business model is search, as it always has been. And a lot of people have said that uh, if you really, to really understand how uh, chat GPT or other generative AI things work, to have a strong understanding of that is to really know that it's actually, truly at the end of the day, it's a better search engine. Right. So it's a search engine that you can argue with, which is something that I've done many times with Google before, but they don't really respond. <laughs> right, this one is more responding. Yeah. Then, uh, Professor Yi, I have to ask you this question. What do you think makes HyperClovax any different from or special compared to the ChatGPT? Well, we already discussed, uh, mentioned the difference between HyperClovax the, the other part of the global competitors. But here, now I like to focus on some difference from the difference between neighbor and the other companies around the world. Neighbor is a quite unique company in Korea mm. and also in the world. It both has required AI technology and also the flat service platform to best utilize the AI technology. From the former, Neighbor has developed AI technology, hardware and networks and infrastructures for years. For the later, Neighbor has very strong business platform on internet search, online shopping, and text messaging. So Neighbor's business domain combines those of the Google, Microsoft, Twitter, and Amazon. Therefore, Neighbor is in a very strong position to make HyperClover X into real world services for user and it looks like Neighbor is already poised to make best utilize of their positions. Definitely. Now, Matthew, I'm sure Neighbor is not the only f firm here in the country to uh, really expand its presence in this AI race. What other firms here in the country are trying to uh, unveil their own AI models? Well, um, earlier in the spring of this year, there was something that Kakao released Right. But they said it was a beta and that uh, it, the performance wasn't really up to par. So they said they would work on it some more. And we haven't really heard so much from it, so much about that since then. But uh, supposedly, uh, presumably, they will come up with something again soon. Um, I also heard that uh, Samsung SES is going to release a generative AI service in uh, maybe in the next month, mm -hmm. they said, or then very soon. They said that unlike uh, services like ChatGPT or this uh, HyperClova X, they are focusing on being able to use closed data sets. You know, Samsung SDS as a computer security company is very concerned about privacy and security. And so there are a lot of corporations that are also very concerned about those things and they would like to have 
the benefits of AI, but they also want to keep this, their proprietary information proprietary. So the uh, problem that Samsung SDS is trying to solve is how to get an AI that can be trained using the data from inside a company and it can be used by the members of that company, but then the data doesn't get out, doesn't leak. So they're concerned about AI, but also about security at the same time. And Samsung Electronics is also working together, somewhat together and somewhat separately due to security reasons with Samsung SDS. They're trying to make uh, that kind of proprietary, I've heard it referred to as private GPT, like mm. uh, something that's based on a limited data set rather than like the whole internet or something like that. And I've heard that there's a startup company called 12 Labs here in Korea. Oh. And they are working on trying to make a generative AI that can understand video. Because you know, we have, right now we have, uh, of course, AI that can understand text that you type to it. And we have AI that can generate new images based on images that you give it. But video is still kind of like a closed, opaque uh, mm. kind of data set for AI. So they're trying to solve that problem. Right, I have to point out these are all, you know, conglomerates like big firms and also like SMEs and also even small firms that are really jumping into this AI race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, the 12 labs, the Korea-based one, is significant because it got into the top 50 AI startup company list by uh, CB Insights. Uh huh. So they're really making a making a strong impact on the global development. Of right, AI. then that leads me to the next question, Professor E. Why are these uh, local companies trying so hard to create their own AI models and put them in the market? I mean, what's behind this ambitious pursuit? It's the game of so live or die. So language is the fundamental modality of bilateral interaction among humans and also between human and AI which is the most important component of building human culture. One may say that losing LM may result in human culture. However, I'm not saying that the companies are all patriot. Rather, I think the companies are looking for dominant share of the market related to the language and culture. I used to say that in the future, there will be only two group of people with and without AI, and the prosperous people with AI will utilize LRM, last language model, as the main interface between AI. It's really huge market. Therefore, all the, even the big company and small SME, they are all looking for the developing their own last language model, although their tactics are slightly different. The big companies looking for the quite general purpose pre-trained last language model, but the small and medium companies looking for a niche area with lighter version of the RMM may come up with similar or slightly less performance than RMM. So it's very big market and everybody are looking at it. Professor E, it's really interesting that you said it's going to be with AI or without AI in the future. That speaks about how prominent AI will be in the coming years. Right. And also, Matthew, now I hear the number of users of ChatGPT is on a decline. Is that so? Yeah, it has been reported that uh, the Washington Post said that the uh, number of users of ChatGPT went down in June for the mm. first time. It had a explosive growth from the, when it was announced all the way until June of this year. But then in June, there seemed to be fewer users than before. Well, I mean, what are they citing the reasons? Well, um, it's hard to really understand what the reasons are. I mean, there are one, one thing that you could worry about is that some other chat, G, some other GP, chat bot is mm. becoming more popular than that. And there have been a few splashes made by uh, the Microsoft chat bot, but it, uh, it, got, it got kind of strange and a little bit um, unusual. <clears throat> so it hasn't really like taken a large majority of the users away. There's also, uh, it could also be said that there's ChatGPT 3.5 is the one that most people have been interacting with now, but there is a ChatGPT 4.0 that is being uh, rolled out kind of slowly to other people, to some people that uh, would like to pay for a subscription to test it. And it seems to be more friendly and more understanding of uh, social things and like humanities topics, mm -hmm. but also less 
useful when it comes to asking about algebra or uh, computational topics. Would you say the 3.5 version is the most popular at the moment? Yeah, that's the one that you huh. get when you like go to the website and right. like, start asking questions. I use that a lot too. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. And also, Professor Yi, why is it that existing models like ChatGPT, for instance, are losing users? Is it because the models are not good enough or is it the dying interest from users like us? Good question, but I'm not worrying about it. It's quite natural phenomena. Mm. Human usually responds not to the absolute value, but the difference of values. And ChatGPT first show up last the end of last year, the difference from before was really large. Now, although the AI value keep on improving, but the difference is almost saturated. So for the, I'm looking for more business and services application based on generative AI will come and they will solve the problem. Right, more versions or updated versions, good for us users, right? Right, and more also more service, human-related direct services. Definitely. Professor Yi, then, I have to ask you, will there ever be a perfect model in the end? I mean, what does it take to create a solid AI model that is not just a fad? Uh, it's a good topic, but it also depends on what we mean by the word perfect. If we mean AIs without error, I think it is impossible. The goal of AI is to make something similar to human, and human is not error free. However, if we mean human accepted AI, I think we already have them for low risk applications such as recommendation of searching results and shopping. People has lower threshold of acceptance level, and many people, including myself, are using that already. For high risk application people require much higher acceptance criteria, and the most important issue may be the accuracy, error-free. Error -free. So the main problem of current generative models come from the simple feed-forward architecture of the input to the output. Although the self-attention, which usually called as bottom attention before, is not good enough, and we also need to incorporate top-down attention to e re-evaluate the correctness of the generated output. Also, it is very important to make personalization for each training data. Each person or organization needs specially fine-tuned model, not for one model for everybody. That's not good. It is similar to the fact each people has unique different brain, so each people organization should have specialized AI. Thank you so much for that thorough analysis. Now, Matthew, before I let you go, briefly as an AI user yourself, what do you look uh, forward to the most when using AI? I mean, is there any, uh, some sort of uh, technology that, that you're, you're looking forward to the most? Uh, well, I, I'm really looking forward to the video thing. You know, the AI that can manipulate and create video. Right. I know it, it has the potential to be very misused, like my own video image that I'm making right now could be processed by such an AI, and yeah. they could force me to say other things that I never said before. But also, it could become very fun, very amusing, when you can make lots of wonderful... You could uh, edit a, a movie to have an ending that you wanted it to have, rather than the ending that it has now. Actually, that sounds interesting. Yeah, that does sound interesting but also really scary, but also quite interesting. Right, with those concerns, but who knows how it goes. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you for your insight to this afternoon, Professor Yi, and also thank you so much for joining me here in the studio, Matthew. Uh, it's always a pleasure. It's a pleasure. We thank you so much for watching Issues and Insiders. This was Dami, Kim Dami filling in for Min Sunny, who will be back on next Monday. Have a great weekend.